And we've all seen enough of Charlie Sheen lately. Boy, I tell you, that guy gets around. And this little catchphrase of his uh, winning is really starting to catch on. It is like the 1984's version of Where's the Beef in, in, in the late 90s. And uh, even to this day, we all say uh, when something good happens. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, so the winning catchphrase, I think, is going to be around for a, for a long time to come. Charlie Sheen, I tell you, this guy, he might have been as crazy as a fox because he uh, he went crazy on Alex Jones' show a week ago Tuesday, which, looking at my calendar, was the 24th of February. And he called the producer of Two and a Half Men, Haim Levine. Emphasis on the Haim, of course. That was kind of... Uh, very close to being kind of anti-Semite. But he's he's probably going to walk away the winner in this deal because he'll probably go back to shooting two and a half men. He'll probably get pretty good money from CBS to do it. And I bet you right now the only way he comes back is if uh, the producer of the show, Chuck Lorre, uh, steps down. And that'll probably end up happening. If the, if the stars are upset, then the producers usually end up on the unemployment line. So, Charlie Sheen, yes, yes, sir, friend, you are indeed winning. Well, welcome, everybody, to the March 4th, 2011 edition of the Big Polly video blog. I am Big Polly, Paul Blum, out of Pinellas Park, Florida, and today we're doing uh, one from the follow up file. About a month ago, I had mentioned that uh, there was going to be a little war of words here in St. Petersburg between Goliath Davis, who is a city employee, deputy mayor, and Bubba the Love Sponge, who is a uh, syndicated talk show host, mostly out of Florida, but in the South Carolina and Ohio as well. Well, the, this, this war has already come to a shockingly quick ending. Uh, it was announced today that uh, Goliath Davis was fired two days ago, Wednesday the 2nd of March, by St. Petersburg Mayor Bill Foster. Now, Foster had been criticized by Bubba for not doing this. And uh, it turns out, lo and behold, that it did in fact happen a couple of days ago. In fact, it was on Goliath Davis's birthday. Um, so as some in St. Petersburg are reporting, the long citywide nightmare is over. Goliath Davis is going, going, and gone. Thank God. Now, for those of you who think this is a rationally motivated thing, no, absolutely not. Uh, I do not hope by any means this turns into a, a, a racially charged, racial injustice type of argument that will be made uh, after Goliath Davis is, is now gone, today being his last day, today the 4th of, of March 2011. I, I, I seriously hope that this does not turn into a racial situation because if you're Goliath Davis and you do not go to the uh, funeral of the two police officers uh, that were shot in late January and you go to the uh, funeral of the shooter, then you're pissing and defecating on the city. Now, uh, Tuesday they buried the, the most recent St. Pete city cop that had been shot, uh, Mr. Crawford, David Crawford. And according to reports that I have been seeing in local media, Goliath Davis, whether he was ordered to or not, did not go to that. So I think Bill Foster had had enough. I think any decent human being at that point would have said, Mr. Davis, see ya. And I think the city did the right thing. I think Mr. Foster did the right thing. And the person who ends up being the hero is going to be Bubba the Love Sponge because he was the first to report that he was not at the funeral for the two police officers in the early part of February and went to Hydra Lacey's funeral. And uh, I just think it was a matter of time from that point on. Bubba's going to get the brownie points for this. He deserves it, but I think a lot of people wanted Goliath Davis gone for a long time. So the, the war has come to an abrupt end. If this was an MMA fight or a, or a boxing match, it would be a first-round technical knockout. Well done, Bubba. You, sir, are indeed winning. Uh, quickly to uh, another story that has been in the news of the late. No, I'm not going to talk about Charlie Sheen, but I found this interesting 
because I don't think this argument is going to get any traction, nor is it going to go anywhere. Mike Huckabee, the former governor of Arkansas, has come out saying that our president, Barack Obama, was born in Kenya. Now, let's just say for, for, for grins that that's true, that Barack Obama is, an American, is not an American citizen. He does not uh, meet the requirements for being president and thus should be removed. Well, you got to remember that in 2008, all of these secretaries of state, all of these supervisors of elections in the 50 states, all signed off on uh, Barack Obama being legally uh, registered as a candidate. He met the legal requirements. Now, some of those secretaries of states, some of those supervisors of elections in all these respective states across the land, I'm just betting one of them had to be Republican. So, you know, I think as far as this cycle, 2009 to 2013, is concerned, it is too late to unring this bell. And I don't think it, you're not going to see it in a million years. That Barack Obama's going to be president until someone uh, gets more votes than him in a presidential election. Uh, or else. Now, let's look at it this way. What if a state like Arizona and Tech or Texas, I, I would see these as the two most likely candidates, we have a 2012 uh, presidential elections coming up. Now, it, it would not be unfair for a state to say, well, Mr. Obama, there are questions whether or not you are a legal citizen of the United States, sir, and we're going to investigate it, and if we think if you don't show us a birth certificate, if you don't show us any additional proof that you are uh, registered as a citizen in the United States, then you don't get to participate in our presidential ballot in our primary in 2012. Well, there's a problem with that. That being, say he gets kicked off in a couple of states. Well, if no one runs against him on the Democratic ticket, which doesn't seem likely at this point, remember that the last three uh uh, presidents to have to run a primary as incumbents was 1976 Gerald Ford, 1980 Jimmy Carter, 1992. I'm sorry, 19. It was 1992. I was correct to begin with. Uh, 1992. It was uh, George H. W. Bush who ran against Pat Buchanan. Now they all have one thing in common. Actually, two things in common. They all won their. Uh, their seats, there are primary to be to run in a presidential election, but come November they all lost. So I think there's going to be an extreme amount of pressure uh, from Obama and his White House to the Democrats saying, "Don't run against me, don't you dare run against me," because the Democrats in turn would end up losing in 2012 to a Republican if current president of the last three times it's happened has, has held. So I just think it's an argument, that the Berker argument, yes, I think people should question and continue to question because uh, people who break the rules sometimes do so from the least likely of places, being in charge of something and being in power of something. So I think you have to watch out for that, and I think that all citizens have to be aware of that. But I think this Berker argument goes nowhere, and it goes nowhere fast because the Republicans are in on it uh, by you know just by looking at the facts they're they're in on it because they signed off in 2008 on him being a legal participant and uh, you know if they're going to do it in 2012 if they're going to question his citizenship in 2012 they can do it but if uh, you know three or four states kick him off the ballot I, I I tend to think it would more likely be one maybe two states kicking him off the Democratic ballot. Uh, you know, the other states will just vote him in if there's no primary opponent. I don't think there's going to be. Well, anyway, this has been my blog for the 4th of March. I'm Big Polly, and I will uh, catch you later. Bye.